In the last video, we discussed some of the different variables that our contract is going to have. We had said that we would have a manager variable, and this would contain the address of the person who created the contract. If we think back to our last contract that we worked on, the inbox contract, you will recall that we had a variable in there called message. And you will also recall that every time we make a variable, we have to declare the type of the variable as well. In this case, the message variable was of type string. So I got a question for you now. Knowing that we need to store the address of a person who created this contract, what type of variable do you think manager should be? Well, I think maybe string would be a really good guess because we know that addresses are sequences of numbers and letters. So if you guessed string, hey, that's a totally reasonable guess. However, in the world of solidity, there is another type that is available to us, the address type. An address type or a variable of type address is specifically meant for, yeah, you guessed it, storing addresses. Now, the, when as soon as I say that there is an address type, you might immediately start thinking, well, what other types are there? So clearly we know that there is an string type and there is a address type, but what other types of variables can we create with Solidity? I think this is gonna be a good point for me to introduce the idea of some other types that we have available in the language. Our lottery contract is not going to make use of many of these other types, but I just want to give you a quick introduction to some of the other types we have, a vari we have available because we will use some of these other types in the future. All right, here's a table of some of the basic types that we have available to us in Solidity. Notice that I say basic on here. There are other types, but they are more complex. And these, for example, might be an array or a mapping. And we'll discuss those other more complex types in due time. So let's talk about some of these different basic types. You've already seen an example of a string. A string is, just like it is in other languages, a sequence of characters. And so an example might be the string hi there, or the word chocolate, like so. A Boolean is another type that you've probably seen in other languages as well. So Boolean value would be simply the values true or false. String and Boolean, I think no matter what language you have come from in the past, be it JavaScript, Ruby, Java, whatever it might be, I think these are all, these two right here are gonna be pretty straightforward and clear. But if you're coming from Ruby or JavaScript, these next two might be a little bit more complex. So if you're watching this video, I am going to assume that you've got a background in JavaScript. And so I'm gonna give you a little bit of a detailed description about these two types right here. These are of type int and uint. It's short for integer and unsigned integer. These are both intended to install, to contain numbers. So numbers like, for example, zero, negative 30,000, or 59,000, whatever it might be. The big difference between an integer and an unsigned integer is the presence of a sign that indicates whether or not the number is positive or negative. So the term unsigned literally means this number does not have a positive or negative sign associated with it. So an unsigned int can only be positive or zero or greater. Essentially, it can only be positive. I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail on ints and uints, and this might sound like it's going overboard, but trust me, this is stuff that you will probably eventually have a question about. So when we start writing Solidity, you're going to see not only types of int and uint, but you will also start to see types where we have the word int and then a number right after it. So for example, you will see in a lot of Solidity code the word int8 or int16 or int32. The number after the word int specifies the number of bits that are used to store this particular number. The number of bits that are used to store a number will specify exactly how large a number this variable can contain. So if you see a type of int8, that number can only hold values anywhere from negative 128 up to 127. Int 16 can only hold from negative 32,000 to positive 32,000, and so on. We have sizes of int in multiples of eight. So we have int eight, 16, 32, 40, 48, you get the idea. It goes on all the way up to int 256. 
in 256 is made for storing really, really, really large numbers, either really negative or really positive. The last thing I want you to be aware of around integers is that whenever you see the type int, that is an alias as int 256. So if you see some code that says that this is a variable of type int, that means that it is in a variable of type int 256. They are the same thing. All these rules also apply to uints as well. So we can have a uint of 8, uint 16, uint 32, 40, 48, and so on. Remember that with the uint, we don't have negative numbers. So we take that same range of numbers, but the minimum now becomes 0. So whereas before we had negative 28 to 127 with an int 8, with a uint we can store values from 0 up to 255, and then 0 to 65,000, and 0 to 4 billion, and so on. Just like with ints, a, the term uint, or the type uint, is an alias for uint 256. At this point, if you're from the world of JavaScript and you haven't really worked with a strongly typed language before, where you have to specify the size of the number you want to work with, this might seem a little bit overwhelming. For example, when should I pick a uint 8 versus a uint 16? Well, to be honest, at the end of the day, if this really seems overwhelming and you don't want to worry about the size of your numbers, you can always just fall back to using a uint or an int everywhere. You do pay for the storage of these values, remember that. So the larger the type, the more you have to pay for storage. But at present, the increase in price is not extremely significant. So as you're just working with language and getting used to solidity, my opinion is that there are way better things to be concerned with. So unless you know what you're doing, unless you decide that you really want to hone in on the correct range of variable, I really encourage you to not sweat it too much just yet. When you get some more experience with Solidity, then you can start worrying about this very, very small detail. Again, there really are way better places to spend your time than worrying about the size of your variables. All right, just a couple more on here. The last thing I want you to keep in mind about int and uint is that they cannot store any decimals. So only whole numbers. Well, technically it's not a whole number, but you get the idea. No decimals. If we want to use a decimal, we have access to fixed and ufixed. Ufixed in this case, just like before, means unfixed. So unfixed means we cannot have a negative number, but they can both have decimals. Now in practice, these might seem like you're going to want to use fixed and unfixed much more frequently. But whenever we're working with decimal numbers, it usually means that we're doing some type of math calculation in our code, right? Like we're doing some division or subtraction, or excuse me, some division or multiplication of already fixed numbers or whatever it might be. In the world of contracts with Ethereum, we usually do not end up doing a lot of math inside of our contracts. Remember, these contracts are way more about storing raw data and implementing some simple, very simple business logic. As soon as we start doing complex math, remember we pay for every operation that occurs inside of our contract. And so it just ever so happens that as we're writing these Ethereum contracts, we very rarely end up putting some really critical business logic or some really complex math because we don't have to pay for doing that math. We'll see some pretty good examples demonstrating this as we go throughout the course. Now the very last type on here is the one that I mentioned at the start of the video, the address type. We specifically use the address type for storing addresses because it is a type that has some methods tied to it for sending money. So if we create a variable of type address and then store an actual address on there, we can reference that variable and call some methods on it to send money to that address, which is exactly what we're probably gonna have to do when we start working on our lottery contract. Because remember, at some point in time, we're going to want to send the winner some amount of money. All right, so this has been a pretty long lecture on some of the basic types that are available to us. Let's continue the next lecture, and we're going to start working on our code for our contract, and we're going to make a variable of type address. So I'll see you there.